Hey everyone, Frank here and welcome back. So I'm getting ready to load some Thomapan 200 into my 35 millimeter bulk film loader. Now the loader that I'm using is the Lloyd's bulk film loader. Now this particular bulk loader design has been around forever. It's compact, it's a simple design, and it's easy to use. Now there are other types of bulk loaders available, both new and used, like models from Watson, Alden, Kaiser, but I feel Lloyd's is probably the most user-friendly type, and the nice thing is still available brand new as the Legacy Pro Lloyd's 35 millimeter daylight bulk film loader. Now, the price is still quite reasonable also. Uh, for the new version, uh, it's around 50 bucks in the US, but the original version can still be found on the used market, places like eBay and Etsy. So, that being said, I would now like to walk you through the steps that I take in using the Lloyd's bulk film loader. But not only using the loader, but also what I do to maintain the loader before I load it with a 100 foot roll of film, as well as how I store it after I'm done using it. Again, it's a simple design, but it uses a felt light trap. So it's important to keep the chamber where the film sits, keep it clean as possible. That way it avoids the possibility of getting any type of scratches on your film. So these are the steps I take in preparing to load the film into the loader and then to load the cassettes. I loosen the disc, this red disc. This is the locking disc that holds the lid on. So we loosen that and then I remove the lid. Okay, so after I remove the lid, I'm now ready to load a 100 foot roll of film into the bulk loader. But what I do first, again, I want to make sure that there's no issue with dust or small particles of dirt. I start with an anti-static cloth and I kind of just rub around the inside of the film chamber. And that helps uh, remove any kind of static charge that might be in the chamber, which would attract dust. And it also helps clean dust out. And also I'm going to do that for the lid too. Again, anti-static cloth, I wipe it off. I'm trying to keep this as dust free as I possibly can. And I'll follow it up with a, my rocket blower and I'll blow air into it along the felt. And even where the cassette uh, goes into the front, I will blow some air there. The object is just to keep the film transport clean. And once that's done, I'm now ready to put a roll of film into the bulk loader. Okay, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use a just a small leftover piece of film from an old bulk roll that's exposed. So again, it's gonna fit into the loader this way. It's really simple. You wanna do it in this position, not in this position. You want the emulsion to be on the bottom as it goes through the uh, as it goes through the light trap. So I place the film cassette in there and I just simply take my film and I slide it through the felt trap. And it's like this. All right, so now the film is in position. It's loaded into the loader and I'm ready to put the lid back on. And I take the red uh, disc, I screw it down. I screw it down nice and tight because once that's tight, this is totally uh, light proof. Okay, so once the lid is secure, it is now safe to load film from the bulk loader into a reloadable cassette in total daylight. But one thing I do have to mention is that you have to remember though, when you're loading the 100 foot bulk roll into the loader itself, it has to be done in total darkness. And since I don't have a dark room set up. I use a changing bag. I have a large changing bag that I use when I develop my film, which works just nicely to load a 100 foot bulk roll of film into this loader. Now I'm ready to load the film from the bulk loader into a metal cassette. And I'm gonna need a couple of things. I'm gonna need some tape, gonna need a pair of scissors, and of course, I'm going to need a reloadable cartridge. And here I'm using a metal reloadable cartridge, which, which are my favorite. And 
again, I just pop the top off. I have the, uh, where the long end is, and I pull this spindle out. So I'm going to take my loader. I'm going to open up the cassette chamber. And again, once, once the lid is closed, you have the felt light trap that keeps the light from entering the loader. So this tab is the only part that's going to get uh, exposed to light. The rest of the film is safe. So again, it's okay to do this in daylight. And I then take some tape. All right. And then what I'm going to do is take the tape, grab the end of the film, and I'm going to line the tape up with the film, try to get it as straight as possible. All right. So it's attached to the top side of the film. And then I'm going to line up the film with the spool, get that even. And then I'm going to wrap the tape around the spool so it is now attached on the bottom of the film also. And then I'm just going to kind of like start to roll it up a little bit. Then I'm going to take the cassette itself. And then I'm going to put the lid on. All right. The lid snaps right back on and just like that. Then I kind of roll the film back in a little bit and I slide the film cassette back into the chamber at the top of the bulk loader. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay the bulk loader flat and I'm going to take the winding crank and insert it. I'll just move it until it falls down into place and you can feel it fit right into the uh, spool. Now, this particular bulk loader is very simple. It doesn't have an actual frame counter. You actually count your frames by how many turns of the crank. So if I do 10, uh, if I want 10 exposures, I do 13 turns. I want 24, 24 turns. And if I want 36 exposure, 30 turns. And it's real simple. So even if I want a short roll, I just give it a few turns. All right. All right, so let's say I want about 10, and then approximately, I'm not being really uh, exact here, and then I just want to show you the procedure. Pull the film out, then you get your scissors, come along here, close the lid back up, and then what I do is I pull some film out, a little bit of film out, and I take my scissors, I come here and I just like do one of these deals and now I have a leader that can go onto the take up spool of the camera. And one other note is that you can also use factory cassettes. Uh, they're available from what I understand from a lot of photo labs. You just might need a retriever to get the end back out or the, the uh, end tab of film back out. Or if you develop your film yourself, you just make sure when you cut the film off, you leave a little extra tab sticking out. And then you simply take that uh, cassette, which has the film end on it. You just simply line up the film and then you simply put a piece of tape across the top and the bottom, and then you can wind the film up that way. So these work well too. Um, I save a bunch of these too, so that if I run out of the um, reloadable type, I'll have plenty of cassettes. Okay, so once my cassettes are loaded and are camera ready, the next thing I do is I save empty film canisters and I store them in the canisters to keep them dust free. Film isn't a canister. When I'm not using my loader, I like Ziploc bags. I take my loader, put it into a Ziploc bag, seal the Ziploc bag, and then I store the loader in a place that will stay relatively dust free. Like I have a cabinet that I keep a lot of my film accessories in. Okay, something else that's really important that I forgot to mention is don't forget to label everything. Uh, get some masking tape and then get a little Sharpie, fine point Sharpie, and uh, make sure you mark down what kind of film you have, how many rolls you've already loaded, and don't forget to label your canisters, and don't forget to label your cassettes. That way you know what kind of film's in there. Because if you have two or three bulk loaders like I do, then you want to make sure everything is labeled and 
you know what's what. Speaking of labeling everything, I also label how many times I have used my empty cassettes. And as you can see, also sealed and stored in Ziploc bags. So for those of us that load, develop, scan and print our film, we know that dust is the enemy. So even though the manufacturer states that this loader is dust proof, I still like to take the extra steps in maintaining and storing my loader, as well as my cassettes, as I described in this video. Well, on that note, I hope you found this video informative and possibly helpful. And if so, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and once again, I thank you so much for viewing and I'll catch you on the next one.